What's happening everyone? My name is David and this is Tippy Bits. And today I'm going to be walking you through the assembly of your compute blades and your compute cluster. So before we get started though, I have a really important announcement. There are two things you're going to want to be very careful of uh, during this process. Number one, there is a defect that's been found on some of the blades. And if you assemble it before testing it, you will brick your compute module. So first, uh, and this is only for the team cluster pledges, so the re rest of the pledges will get a new blade version called the Mark IV. Um, but if you have a team cluster, make sure you do this first. Plug it in to a PoE power supply, wait five minutes, and if you hear hissing coming from your boards, you have an affected board. So either reach out on Discord or support at computeblade.com. Um, that is really important to do though, uh, people have bricked their compute modules. The second thing, and this is very important because I literally did this in the span of recording this video. When you are sliding your blades in, it is very important to make sure that you are lined up in here. If you are not lined up, you could risk <laughs> stripping components off of the PoE module, and I just did right here, right there on the very end. So be very careful assembling this, and with that, let's get into the assembly. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our compute blades, and the first thing we're gonna do is the latch assembly and the SSD. I'll pour out these components real quick. We have got the latching mechanism, we have got the actual latch pull with the button press. We've got two M3 screws and our standoff screw and our washer for our SSD. Go ahead and pull that out. Before I get started with this though, I'm just going to go ahead and take off these little uh, covers. Okay because they are not needed. That way I don't forget to do that later. And then I'm also going to take it off on the 2080 slot here for the NVMe SSD. I guess this is not just an M2 NVMe slot. This is an M2 slot, which supports, uh, it's a PCI by one lane. All right, next, we're going to take our little latch piece here, and we are just going to match it up to the front. And then we're actually going to turn it around. Line the holes up. And that's where we're going to take these M3 screws. Also, I'm using a magnetic screwdriver because it just makes this so much easier. Pro tip, I recommend installing each of the screws just a little bit. So here, we'll go ahead and start screwing this one in. Once that's in enough to hold it, we're going to take this other one and start it in. And the reason I do that is because these can be a little bit fidgety. So it is uh, handy to have them both in kind of straight before you start actually tightening them down. Also, fun fact of the day, the latch supports, there is a front button uh, that is connected to GPIO pin 20 on the Raspberry Pi. So that's super nice because that allows you to have a you know on off button or reset button depending on your needs uh, right on the front. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Well those are our Dickens. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the little latch piece. It's got a little ball that just slots right up there into that. Slatch piece has a little ball and just slots right into there. And a quick press. Wait. There we go. This edge button here that I can activate with the latch is connected to pin 20 on your Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to go ahead and put on the standoff here. One small thing to note, if you want to support booting from the PCIe, you might have to flash a new boot priority. There's a USB boot repo that's available from the Raspberry Pi Foundation to change the boot priority. 
Also, I'm using Kingston M2 SSDs. There is a whole list of supported SSDs. It is not a complete list, uh, but you can check Uptime's website for that list. And I'll put the link down in the bio. Go ahead and slot that in. And then we've got our little washer on the end and our screw. And then those will both just go on top there. And just like that, we are all set. And just as a heads up, there is a small programmable LED you can see right there on the front of the blade um, that can be used to do all sorts of different things, um, like showing the state of the blade or blinking the blade when you need to find it in a rack. And onto our last bit of assembly, which is in actually installing the Compute Module 4 onto the Compute Blade. Now again, one thing I mentioned earlier is Compute Blade has higher standoffs than a lot of the other carrier boards. Um, and this allows for you to put other modules other than just the Compute Module 4. However, uh, for the sake of this video, that is what this is designed for. That is what these are milled for. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Uh, your assembly may look a little bit different from mine. This is some of the early packaging. So as time goes on, uh, I believe the packaging is going to change a little bit. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, we take our four screws here. We've got our four different, or sorry, three different uh, little thermal pads here. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over. Also, one neat little bit is this is made out of machined aluminum. So super durable and way more cooling than the Raspberry Pi actually needs um, by default. However, that uh, allows you to support overclocking. And also these pads, I am just placing them kind of haphazardly. They do not seem to be cut for any specific, I mean, specific dimensions. This one looks like it's for the RAM. This one is for the EMMC module, which not every board will have, so your mileage may vary. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna place the compute module onto the board first. So just lining up on the bottom, firm press, click, click, awesome. Now that that's all lined up, I'm going to go ahead and just flip this over onto the top. Now I do have it backwards here. We'll flip it over this way, line this up, and then I'm just going to loosely set it on here while I go ahead and grab my screws. I'm just Double check as well, I'll make sure I've got it the right way because that would be funny if I put this on backwards. There we go. Take my screws, go ahead and just put them in. I will note some people mention that some of the screws fit a little bit tight. Um, hopefully we get that all sorted out by the time it makes it to super mass production. There we go. So I've just not even torqued these down yet. And now I'm just going to kind of go a bit in a cross pattern. And just like that, we have a fully assembled compute blade. And now on to our final piece, and that is our fan units. Now I have the dumb fan unit here. You'd be able to tell you had a smart fan unit if you had a bunch of different electronics there. I do not. Uh, but don't worry, even if you don't have that, uh, it can be powered off of either. It just doesn't support uh, load balancing uh, the temperature based off of either. So with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our little plastic clips. That's really hard to get a good picture of. Here we go. There is a larger pin and a smaller pin. And same with our fan. Noctua fans. I'm super grateful they gave us these fans because quite honestly they're really great quality. Uh, there's a larger hole and a smaller hole. So, or smaller and larger. I can't tell which is which behind the camera. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and just put the larger in the larger hole. Oops. Helps if you put them on the right side. Also, um, one important note, there is a right and wrong side to these, and you can tell based off of this. So one of these should slot in naturally to the left side, and one of them should slot naturally into the right side. So I will try and do my best. Here we go. The groove is on the inside here. So there. 
and these are extraction fans. So I'm going to go ahead, clip this on, and then do the same on the other side. Clip. There we go. Now they're in firmly. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to take this, and then I am just going to slot it into the board right there. So we've got slot, slot. Oops. There we go, slot. It is a little bit tight. And then we are just going to press this into those grooves. And then these two little items will go ahead and just clip into those holes. So once we've gotten that close enough, it's pushed in far enough, these should be able to clip in nice and easy. Easy-ish. There it is. That's one. The other one's in, and just like that, we have our fan unit. There's also a bit of extra cable here, so I would go ahead and plug my fan in, just like so. And then you can zip tie this up, fold it over, however you like. And that's our fan unit. Finally, we've got one of the more finicky bits, and that is getting our blades actually into our cluster enclosure with the fan units. In this one you can see I've already gone ahead and put the first fan unit in. It just slots in the back there. The top is what holds it against this clip on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take our second fan unit. I'm going to show you there's an interesting thing you can do and that is you can actually put your blades into the enclosure first and then just verify. That is to verify that our back piece slots into our fan unit comfortably. If it does not, you can actually adjust the pins ever so slightly with a pair of needle nose pliers. So here we want to make sure that it just slots in just like that, but actually inside the unit. So one of the cool things about this is it has these tiny windows on the bottom. These windows allow you to slide your fan unit in and actually verify that the blade is matching up. And here I'll actually show the, uh, what it looks like putting this in. Go ahead, take that, slide it along the bottom, and then the top of the fan goes in first, and then we just push that, and it clips into the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead and install the other fan unit. Again, sliding in along the bottom. Also, my fans are oriented differently. Boom. Top of the fan goes in. And that is what presses it against the clip on the bottom. Top of the fan, in, and slot. And both of them are in. Now if I wanted to get them out, I'd just pull this tab and I could slide them directly out. Now, very gently, I'm going to go ahead and slide these back in. Again, making sure they're in their groove nicely. And when I get to about here, the bump, I'm going to just ever so gently start pressing, and that is not going in nicely. So what that means is my fan unit on the back is preventing it from slotting in. So I'm actually going to flip it over, I'm going to pull the fan unit out ever so slightly, and then just verify the fitment. Here I'm going to go ahead, pull that up, and I'm peeking through this Again, peeking through this little window to see where the pins are, and then I'm going to make modifications such that this blade fits nicely. So I'll push the blade back to where it sits flush. Oops, a little too flush. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and insert that. I'm going to do the same with this other blade. I'm going to get them both down here. Again, we'll pull this back over. Oops, ever so slightly so you can see that blade in. That one slotted in perfectly. And then finally I will actually push all of this just forward, making sure everything is attached nicely. And those two blades now set flush. Let's go ahead, we're going to do this with our last one. Perfect. And just like that, now it can be a little bit more What's the word for that? 
little less concerned that I'm going to bend pins as I go back because these have all been now bent into the correct position. And that is all. After all of that, you have a fully assembled uh, cluster. And next time we'll go into what do you install on your Compute Play cluster. Um, I've been running Kubernetes on it for a couple weeks at this point and really enjoying that. want to definitely try out some other things like um, Ray or, you know, other like distributed processing things. But um, that's my personal use case. What are you using it for? Leave it in the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing about that. And um, make sure, like, subscribe, follow, whatever. Um, looking forward to having you guys back here and I will see you next time.